when you actually pull off of Star Road Drive today, the very first building you see is this triangular building, Miles Standish Hall. original designers of the Miles Standish Hotel were trying to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the Pilgrims landing at Plymouth Rock. And so you had this point of the building pointing towards downtown Boston that resembled the bow of a ship. And you had the, all these themes throughout the hotel, such as the captain's cabin and the Silver Lagoon. One of the major oil paintings is an original oil painting of Miles Standish and the early Pilgrims at the time. When I was here many years ago, I actually stumbled upon these original matchbooks and I found them in a crack in the wall downstairs in the basement. Some of them actually show Miles Standish himself as a soldier. The Miles Standish Hall was supposed to be one of the newest and more fashionable hotels in the city of Boston. The walls were lined with this beautiful oak wall paneling. There were a line of luxury shops along the very first floor and some of the original advertisements actually touted it as being a building that would offer the advantages of an apartment, a hotel, as well as a private home and rates beginning at $3.30 for a single room, $4.40 for a double room, and $6 for a kitchenette suite. She's not afraid of such a kidder. <laughs> well, I'll see you next time I'm in Boston. Oh, put you right through the buyers. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> bottom oh, wow. <laughs> The Miles Standish Hotel is kind of synonymously referred to in Arthur Miller's famous play, Death of a Salesman, and it's referred to as the Standish Arms in that hotel where Willie Loman came to stay and worked in that play. Certainly over the last 80 years or so, many famous personalities have come through these hallways of Miles Standish. Babe Ruth, apparently when he came back to Boston, actually lived here in this building, in Suite 818, because he loved the views from the top of this building. As fashionable as the Miles Standish Hotel was, and as well utilized as it was, it unfortunately opened just prior to the stock market crash of 1929. And as the world and as the United States sank deep into the Great Depression, so did the Miles Standish Hotel. Eventually in the late 1940s, as Boston University was trying to grow and trying to transition from being a commuter school to a residential campus, Daniel Marsh, the fourth president of Boston University, decided to actually purchase the Miles Standish Hotel when it first opened in September 1949, it was exclusively a residence hall for men and men only. And you got to keep in mind that during these years, at least two-thirds of the Boston University student body worked to put themselves through school. So many of the folks actually worked in the boiler room here at Miles, or running the elevators. I happily moved into Miles Standish Halls in the fall of 1957, and to earn my room, I worked in the elevators, which were then manual. It changed my life in as much as I got to know everybody in the building and then decided to run for class office and I won because I was the elevator operator. And I often think that my then going to graduate school and going on to Ford Motor Company and then finally coming back to Boston University as dean was all related to the fact that I ran the elevator at Miles Standish Hall. So as an all-male residence hall, Miles quickly gained a reputation. In fact, just two months after it opened, uh, many of the men that lived here protested the rule that you had to wear neckties at dinner time. One of the Boston Post stories claimed that if Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox could get away with not wearing a necktie at dinner time, then they sure as heck could as well. The Boston University newspaper referred to the men of Miles as being the Miles Miserables and had this infamous reputation of causing protest and causing problems, and suggested that even the women of Boston University preferred MIT men by a substantial margin. If I worked for the food service, my freshman year of Spring 66, we started hearing rumors that people were really unhappy with the food and there was going to be like a food fight. And so at the appointed hour, the place was completely full. And all of a sudden there was this incredible like fog of food flying around. For me, the Miles Standish Hall food fight was the end of college hijinks because the atmosphere turned kind of more gray the following year when the, the Vietnam draft accelerated. I have a letter here from a Joseph Piazza who writes, in the late 1960s and early 1970s, these were times of student unrest, bomb scares, evacuations of the dorm almost on a daily basis, and that there was an early closing of the university and the dorm in May of 1970. We were given only 24 hours to leave the residence. 
I also vividly remember anxiously awaiting my military draft lottery number with other students at the dorm. I lived at Miles Standish Hall where I met my husband Dan. We graduated from Sargent in 1994 and we were married in 1996. We ended up actually naming our first son Miles because that's where we actually met each other. Each one of our children's names has special meanings and we'd always joked that we would name our son Miles, but then when we actually found out we were going to have a boy, we couldn't find a better name. And he is now almost seven years old.